The Guardian worked on a really important story recently with Shivala Madlena. She is an investigative reporter that has worked with TYT in the past. And uh, they brought awareness to an issue here in the United States that is never talked about. And that's the issue of female genital mutilation. Now, uh, female genital mutilation uh, is also referred to as female circumcision. And a lot of people will compare it to male circumcision. But one thing to keep in mind is that it is very different in terms of the intent. Uh, female genital mutilation mutilation usually has to do with ensuring that the girl or the woman never enjoys sex. It's a way of keeping her pure and it leads to long-term health issues including um, problems with menstruation, sexual intercourse, and also childbirth. In a lot of cases the women are in pain literally for the rest of their lives. Um, and what happens in America is women are taken or girls are taken uh, out of the country. They're sent to countries in Africa and uh, this procedure is done and it's absolutely horrible. Now we have a, a piece of the video that The Guardian did. It's a very, very graphic video. It's very difficult to watch, but I think it kind of shows you um, the seriousness of the issue. And you know, with that said, let's take a quick look. We are not happy to marry. A woman that has not been circumcised. Female genital mutilation is a 5,000 year old harmful cultural practice that removes part or all of the female genitalia. It is practiced in 28 countries in Africa, some countries in the Middle East, and Iran. The goal and aim was to subjugate women, to control their sexuality, to guarantee their virginity until marriage. So now, 5,000 years later, it still occurs. I think we've always thought that FGM is something that happens over there. We have girls that have had FGM performed living right here, and we look at the various diaspora communities, and as they grow, the number of girls at risk is growing as well. So this typically happens with girls that are uh, prepubescent, uh, right before they go through puberty. And uh, the problem with this is, you know, of course, the United States has outlawed it, which is why the procedure doesn't take place here in the U.S. They go to other countries in order to do it. Um, but another issue is we don't have many studies on this. We don't have a lot of information as to how many women or how many girls are victims of this practice. So uh, there is a woman living in uh, Atlanta, Georgia right now. Her name is uh, Jaha du uh, Dukure. And she is a victim of this. She's raising awareness about it. And she has started a change.org petition in order to commission more studies on this to get a sense of how many victims there are in the United States. Just, mm -hmm. just watching the video is, is, is incredibly difficult. And I hadn't realized um, until reading about this campaign that there were so many girls in the US who were being taken overseas for this, this horrible, horrific procedure and then brought back. Um, and again, you know, the what, what really pisses me off about it is is the idea that this is somehow equivalent to male circumcision yeah. because not only is the procedure itself different it's essentially you know if you say not just castrated a male but cut off all of his external genitalia that's that's kind of the equivalent of it yes yeah. it's, it's cutting off everything and and uh, it's just it's it's horrific and the result is different from male circumcision it is not the same thing it's not the same thing I think that there is a legitimate argument about whether or not you should circumcise a baby against his his will you know I I, I think that that's an interesting argument but again I think you're right when you say that you can't compare the two Jimmy's making a face I'm oh. curious to see what you're thinking <laughs> no, um, I was no I'm hundred percent against uh, circumcision okay. also I mean it's the same thing it's male a, circumcision yes mm -hmm. it's uh, it's the same thing well no, 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 I'm no. sorry uh -huh. I mean it's the same you're violating the same principle this person doesn't have a decision to do this or not you're doing it to them mm -hmm. you're making this decision for them and there's no medical benefit to circumcision uh, there men who don't aren't circumcised have no higher rate of penile infection or urinary tract infections. It's all just this weird voodoo bullshit. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I've watched a lot, a lot of Christopher Hitchens debate a lot of rabbis on this. And, uh, you know, it's very shocking to hear Christopher, the way he states it, he states it very bluntly, mm -hmm. what it is. I guess you're, you are, you're a maniac and, and you are now mutilating these boys. And, uh, and they're like, oh, they're la you know, and they laugh. They try to laugh it off, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we know that babies get herpes from the, the you know, the, um, the rabbi has to suck on the, after what? he does it. Yeah, yeah the babies get herpes. <laughs> 
Yeah. From their, from uh, the, yeah, yeah, they have to suck it. They bite, like they clip it, and then they suck the butt. I don't know what the, it's okay. all gross, it's an weird. It's incredibly rudimentary procedure. Yeah, and that happens in the United States all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And then we're cool with it, and we think it's great, and they laugh about it. And uh, th this is worse. I mean, it's mm -hmm. worse pain. It happens to them when they're older. I mean, I don't know what the psychological ramifications of getting circumcised are, but I'm sure there aren't. There are some, mm -hmm. and you know they're finding out that there are psychological ramifications to being adopted. You know, there's subconscious anger that people feel of abandonment and stuff. So I can't imagine. It is just such brutal, archaic, just just ignorance. You know, and it goes back to religion also. A lot of it, you know, right. not all of it. It's cultural. But it, it goes back to just, you know, religion stifling, questioning things, stifling thought, stifling, coming up with your own answers to things and questions in life, you know? A religion is the end of the thought. They go, no, no, we encourage questioning. Yeah, but you only encourage one answer, right? Because if somebody comes up with another answer, you got to get the fuck out of here, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm getting a little upset about no, it. No, no, no. I, th I think that you make a lot of really great points. Look, when it comes to... I'm really open to the argument of male circumcision. Like, I, I think that it, it's a really interesting topic. What, how how I think, would it I be think, okay? No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not saying that it is okay. Oh, okay. I'm not saying that it is. I'm just saying that I, I see a lot of credible arguments against it, like the ones that you just mentioned right now. Um, the only thing that turns me off to those who are advocates of banning male circumcision is when they compare it to female circumcision, because I think that you just can't compare the two. You have one case where, yes, they're both religious practices. They're both cultural practices practices, but you have one case where the only purpose of doing it to a woman or to a girl, I should say, is to ensure that she's sexually pure, right. that she never enjoys sexual right. activity. For I mean, the rest I, of her life. for the rest of her life, she's in pain for the rest of her life in many cases, not all cases. In the case of male circumcision, I mean, look, I, 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 I am against doing it to a baby when they don't have the ability to consent, right? But a, a circumcised male can still enjoy sex. You know, yes. that's not the, so you can't compare the it's two. It's really yeah. hard, but I manage. <laughs> <laughs> well, essentially, yeah. you know, when we're talking about female uh, genital mutilation, it's a lifetime punishment, essentially, for being female.